So for this lesson, we are now going to learn how to calculate moles to molecules or grams to molecules, which means that starting with moles to molecules, you have one conversion because ultimately it comes down to this. Let's write this in the top. I'm going to use a separate sheet of paper so we have a little bit better notes here. Our moles, I'm going to put in the middle. I'll put my grams on the left. I'll put my molecules on the right. And then I'm actually going to write the word atoms because we are going to further into lessons about a conversion. So if we're starting with moles, we can convert to molecules using one conversion step. If we start from grams to moles, we can use one conversion step. We can also convert to moles to gram in one conversion step. So you should be able to go back and forth between all of these in one conversion. However, if you notice from this example, we're starting in grams, and I'm asking you to find the number of molecules. In order to do so, you need to make sure you do two separate conversions. What's nice about dimensional analysis is that it can be placed in one long format instead of having two separate proportions. However, either way, you can still come to the same answer. So let's do this first problem. We're getting, we're starting with moles, excuse me, and we're going into and converting into molecules. What we need to know from this is what one mole is equal to. One mole is equal to a value called Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and it's generically called representative particle. Representative particle. That's a generic term for either a molecule or a formula unit. And let's just quickly explain what those two vocab words mean again. A molecule um, is a covalent and it is a non-metal plus a non-metal. I kind of scrunched that in there. Formula unit means an ionic compound, which starts with a metal and ends with a non-metal. So just a reminder from previous lessons what those two vocab words mean. So representative particle can be either one. Really, it's looking at what the molecule or an ionic compound is. In this case, it starts with a non-metal, so this is a molecule, arsenic, is also a nonmetal with trifluoride, and these two are also nonmetals, so then these would be called molecules. Now let's start with the math then. So we have moles, and we want to convert into uh, molecules. Remember, we can go either way, back and forth. We know this information, so let's place it down into a t chart. 7.2 moles of C6H6, or starting material, it's all over 1. In dimensional analysis, they want you to make sure that you have the unit across from each other so you can cancel out. We know this is 1 mole equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm now going to write the word molecule because I know that or molecule, excuse me, I know that this formula is a molecule, so I'm not going to generically write the word representative particle. So because these are next to each other, you multiply them, and then you divide by 1, and you get an answer of 4.33 times 10 to the 24th molecule, which can be shorthand as moloch, of C6H6. Let's do the second problem in this equation here. It's 7.2 moles of arsenic trifluoride. So it's writing the formula correctly. Make that T chart, put place it over one. I have this value. I'm going from moles to molecules. So I'm going to place the mole on the bottom so I can cancel out moles. I'll place molecule on top. Mathematically, it's the same. Multiply across. 
Notice that because we have the same number of moles, we also have the same number of molecules for both of these formulas. All right, so we did one conversion here. Well, let's see what happens when we start with grams and we want to convert to molecules. Okay. So I'm starting with grams. We're going to do this first one right here. Flip the page over here. Like that. I'm starting with 100 grams. And it's dinitrogen tetrafluoride. Dinitrogen tetrafluoride. I'm going to set up a T-chart. Because I know I'm going from grams to moles and moles to molecules, I'm actually going to automatically set up the second and third convert or the second conversion. So my first conversion and my second conversion. My first conversion, starting from grams to moles, makes me convert this into molar mass first. So that second point, you have to get the molar mass from the periodic table. And if you don't remember how to get the molar mass, please review the molar mass video. So calculating the molar mass, I get 104.02 grams of N2F4. I'm going to place one mole of N2F4, the unit of grams per one mole. The reason I place this on top is because I need to make sure I can cancel out my units. Again, dimensional analysis, the big setup is to be able to cancel out your units. So now I'm, I'm at a mole. However, I'm asking you to calculate molecules. To become a molecule now, I have mole on top. That means I have 1 mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecule of dinitrogen tetrafluoride. I can cancel out moles, and I'm left with molecule. To calculate this, we multiply everything on top multiply everything on the bottom, and we divide the two answers. When we divide the two answers, we get 5.78 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of N2F4. Notice that I didn't place the uh, molecule formula in each of these. You can choose to do this. You can, um, for the work, you don't necessarily have to, as long as in your answer you have your final answer with the unit and the molecule name. We have one more to do, which is 100 grams of water. So last time we started with these two, and they were identical because we converted moles just to molecules. Now we're starting with grams. I'm going to start the setup. I'm asking you to calculate molecules. So grams to moles first, then moles to molecules next. So I'm going to make my t-chart extended so it's appropriate for that. I need to calculate my molar mass to convert from grams to moles. And when I look in the periodic table and calculate water's molar mass, I get 18.02 grams of water per one mole of water. I'm now at a mole, converted into mole. However, I need to convert into molecules, so I place the one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecule. I can cancel everything out, and I'm left with 3.34 times 10 to the 24th molecule of water. Hopefully that helped. If you need to, stop at any point and practice.